Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing well. So the big earthquake today, which woke us up at 4.03 a.m., and uh, honestly, it felt like the camper was, well, it felt like Bigfoot was just shaking the camper. So hence, you know, went out there, took a look around, and recognized the fact that, you know, that must have been an earthquake. It wasn't the wind. It wasn't Bigfoot. And so we checked the USGS, and we saw that we had a 6.5 quake uh, at that time, it was listed as a 6.4 that hit Nevada, and this is around Tonopah, which, you know, you're basically going towards the center of the, the state as far as between, um, it's in between Reno and Vegas, and really there's not a lot of people out there at all. There's no real big cities out that way, and it was strong because people actually felt this everywhere from Salt Lake City all the way down to San Diego. So, you know, this was a big one. 750 miles, people felt this. And there have been a ton of aftershocks. You know, it's, it's ro rock and rolling, that is for sure. And, you know, seeing this, seeing what we're seeing happening, you know, it's, it's really got me thinking and analyzing. And, you know, I've been <laughs> thinking and analyzing about the pattern of the quakes that we have seen, as you see the location right here. And here we have Vegas, and here we have Reno, and uh, have made this trip between Vegas and Reno uh, several times now. So we got used to knowing the lay of the land through that area. And again, it's very, very sparsely populated. Um, you know, I would venture to get to guess that there's more people, vastly more people, probably living on the military bases between the Nevada test site, Area 51, Area 6, all that up to uh, Hawthorne as well, where there's uh, just a tremendous amount of bunkers, underground bunkers. And then don't forget China Lake, big, big military site as well. There's military sites all around these areas, and many of them are deep and underground. As there's some rumbling in the background, I think that might be military helicopters, but we will find out, hopefully. Anyway, this was big, and let's... Let's look at what we got going on here. Uh, it's just so curious to look at these patterns. You know, we've we've had a lot of activity. And we had down, uh, of course, in Ridgecrest, we had the big one down there just about a year ago. And it's been swarming ever since. And for a while, it was swarming massive, massive amounts of uh, quakes every day. And if we zoom on in, just to look, there's 29, you know, in the last 24 hours. Looks like the biggest one's about a 3.3. And uh, we've been through this area several times exploring. We've explored a lot in Death Valley. And you know what I, I have found in Death Valley? Um, sea sponges and fossilized clams, um, you know, and coral. And it does not look to me like it's millions of years old. Uh, if somebody told me that's 500 years old, I would believe it, honestly. Um, and we found it in multiple spots throughout Death Valley. And, you know, it's, it's just really curious when you think about it. So let's look at what we got right now. It seems like we got a little pentagram worked out here. On the base now these these are bombs I'm sure this is bombing going on they do a lot of different testing there uh, this is listing it as 8.5 kilometers deep so yeah, maybe maybe not maybe it's now that there you go zero kilometers deep that's a surface bomb hey, that's a surface bomb too this is saying 2.6 and that one's 15.5 uh, I wonder how deep these underground military bases are isn't this curious? I mean, look at all these quakes. Uh, these are on the east of Tonopah. Uh, three, a magnitude of three here, 2.1 depth, 2.2, and that's 11.7. And this one is a, at 2.5 kilometers deep, and it's a 3.2, a 3.4 at 9.4 kilometers. This one's right in, pretty much in town on the highway. 0.7 kilometers deep, a 3.0, and this one's a 3.0, 11.7, so we see there's a lot, and there's there's been swarming in a lot of these different areas, this is Mono Lake, 
And this is the rim of a super volcano caldera right here in Mammoth Lake, which we know is something to, you know, watch. <laughs> Most definitely, not just uh, Yellowstone. There's there's more out here than there, than just Yellowstone. So if we look at this area, look at that. There's 129 quakes right in there. 134. Hmm. This thing ain't over yet. Uh, there's and yeah, I'm feeling shaken right now. Um, this, yeah, there's a little bit of shaking going on. This is really curious. Um, it's so, so curious. Now, we had swarms south of Carson City. As we were saying, there's been uh, swarms by Mono Lake. Obviously, we had the Salt Lake City over by Mag Magma here. And actually, you know, they got 16 there today. And over here in Idaho, uh, right now we have four in the area where we had the bigger quake over there before. You know, some activity up in Cascadia, not a ton, 3.0 there, 2.2 here, and over here, 2.2 in Princeton, Canada. And then uh, also over by the geysers, there's a little swarm going there. We got 37 of them. They're all relatively small. So, you know, this has me thinking. Now, we also have things getting interesting over in Hawaii. And uh, there's talk about, you know, uh, you know, the bigger, uh, the big island getting bigger. There's talk about the possibility that we'll start to have another uh, island forming. As when you look at the Hawaiian island chain, this is because of a plume. This is a magma, magma plume that goes deep, deep into the earth. And if you look at it, all these islands coming here and then making this curve, these were all f formed by the same plume. So to me, because the plume uh, is pretty stable, this looks like at some point there was some crustal displacement and the crust shifted as we see it change direction. And is it getting ready to shift again? That's that's the other question. And, um, you know, I, I haven't seen that in my dreams and meditation in my lifetime. Um, but, you know, perhaps in somebody's uh, that's, you know, in their 20s or 30s, yeah, maybe you will actually see the shift. But, wow, look at this activity going on, guys. So this got me thinking about a couple different things. For one, the Earth change maps. You know, and this one's from Stan Deo, and this was compiled in 2011. They're fairly consistent. Um, you see, eventually, a lot of the coastlines are supposed to disappear, and the Mississippi River becomes the Mississippi Sea. And Casey said the Gulf uh, of Mexico and the Great Lakes will, you know, basically be unified there. In the West, we see a lot of massive change. And, you know, here... It's even showing some parts of the Four Corners that are going to be in trouble if this is accurate. And you see basically um, most of California is gone according to this map, uh, except for some of the higher peaks through here. Now when we look at some of the other ones, we see they're fairly consistent. And you know this one's showing basically, well Casey did say that he would be reincarnated around the year 2100 and he would be in Nebraska, and the ocean would be there. The ocean would be all the way in to Nebraska uh, on the western part. So that's pretty wild to think of. And, you know, here you have basically California being just a series of islands. Nevada is totally gone. Almost all of Utah is totally gone. Half of Colorado is gone. And the, east, uh, the western parts of Arizona are gone, according to this map. And here we see another one. This is from Dr. Chet Snow. And again, you know, you see this massive loss of land in the West, also in the heartland. So this one's a little bit on the extreme, as is this one. Again, just an island chain over in California. And you see the same, it's the same theme coming through from all these different people, including like the Navy map that we have talked about as well. 
So, you know, massive, massive changes. Could it really happen in our age, in, in, in our lifetimes? Could that really happen? Well, scientifically, one of the things to really look at is the Walker Lane, which I've talked about uh, several times. And this is something that is gaining traction as, as far as being thought of as a potential outcome. We know about San Andreas Fault. That's the big one that's been talked about forever. And, you know, the thought is that if the San Andreas Fault splits, you might have L.A. being farther north than San Francisco. And that's something that's hard to comprehend. Well, you know, the Walker Lane is, is a fascinating thing to look at as well. Because this is the other big possible uh, possibility. And one of the things that happened with the Ridgecrest quake is that it woke up the Garlock Fault. And the Garlock Fault is, is actually putting pressure on the San Andreas. And uh, the Joe Brandt story, uh, this was a gentleman who way back in, I believe it's the 40s, um, had a dream, a vision that he said was given to him by God in which the big one happens, you know, and L.A. is wiped out, Southern California is pretty wiped out, um, and the San Andreas goes, but it's the Garlock Fault that triggers it. And so the Garlock Fault is now very awake, and uh, after the Ridgecrest quake, and we might debate, you know, whether or not this is all natural or not. Could this be being triggered? You know, there were rumors that it was actually China that did this because, you know, the Ridgecrest qu uh, quake t took place at China Lake, which is a Navy mil military base. Um, and so some say it was using earthquake uh, machinery and technology to create this in American military base. And obviously, Obviously, we have a Cold War that's, you know, of sorts between China and the U.S., the trade war and everything before this new plague upon the land broke out. There was just a signing of an agreement, and then boom, it hit. And um, when we look at this, you can see here's the southern walker zone, central walker zone, and a northern walker lane. And the thought is that just as what happened with Baja California. Because once Baja California was attached to the mainland, the pressure of the plates, because the Pacific Plate and North American Plate are grading against each other, and you know they're going in opposite directions, uh, split this off from the mainland. And then the ocean filled it up, and we have the Gulf of California. Well, the thought is that the Gulf of California is going to extend all the way up to Reno. And that would basically uh, give you your new coastline uh, of, of the western United States would, would really end up being uh, Nevada. And it's pretty fascinating to, to look at. But this, this split that started so long ago with splitting Baja California off from the mainland of Mexico and causing the Gulf of California would continue to go up and north. As we see here, uh, basically, now this runs into the San Andreas here. There's so much pressure going on. We have so much uh, going on even farther up. And, you know, honestly, when we had the quake, Cindy's first thing was, besides the fact is somebody pushing on the camper, if that was a quake, then she wondered, did Cascadia go? What, you know, did Cascadia go was what she was, you know, thinking in her first impression. And we know all this is, is intertwined and intertied together. And it's pretty fascinating stuff. And uh, this one I've talked about several times as well. This particular article here and this gentleman here. So this is James Fault. And, uh, you know, he's exploring what he thinks is going to be the future continental edge of America, North America, uh, which is basically, you know, the border of California and Nevada. So, you know, is, is California's future going to be one of becoming basically a series of islands? Perhaps, perhaps. And, you know, will Nevada be the new coastline? 
as you see it here. So this is a good representation of what may, may happen. And you see this is how it goes. The Gulf of California area right here would just basically split, continue to, to widen, and go right through right here as we see, ending up right here uh, to the east of Reno at uh, like Tahoe area here. And, you know, this would be the splitting off. So it's not thought that California would really fall into the sea. Um, but though, you know, if you look at some of the prophecies like Mother Shipton and uh, others as well, you know, Casey himself, I mean, they both said that certain areas that are under the sea now are going to be the main habitable zones. There'll be land rising, new land rising, and there will be also many areas, and Casey worded it uh, such that where many battles had been fought, that will be way under the ocean. It's pretty wild to think of things happening so so rapidly in our time. And this is uh, out of Nevada today. Um, finding faults. How the burgeoning Walker Lane may split the American West. As you look at this massive, massive crack right here. And this is from Ridgecrest. And uh, if you're sensitive, you could sense these things out there. The changes, they may happen super rapidly. So in 1872, the Owens Valley earthquake happened. And this, they're estimating, was somewhere between about 7.4 to 7.9. And this is over here in uh, Lone Pine area. And, you know, this is very close to Ridgecrest again. And this was massive. There wasn't a lot of people there. Uh, there was 27 people killed, 56 injured, not a lot of people living in the area, but almost all the buildings were destroyed. 52 of 59 houses were destroyed. One report states that the main buildings were thrown down in almost every town in Inyo County. So it was pretty, pretty damn big. And the researchers later estimate that similar quakes to that occur about every three to 4,000 years. Now, of course, we are not in typical times, and we have a lot of other variables going on, as we've talked about with the Grand Solar Minimum, and most definitely a magnetic pole reversal that is well underway, and, you know, we've got the pole, North Pole, rapidly going towards Siberia. And, uh, by the way, there is a common grave of the earthquake's victims, and it's registered as a California historical landmark. So... It got me thinking also about Yellowstone because do you know where the magma from that goes and feeds Yellowstone originated? It originated in the exact same area at that split where Baja California is. And then you could see, usually you could see on an active day exactly where the path of the magma is because we'll see quakes going right along this pathway. And so they come up. They cross over right here, California, Nevada border, up into Utah, jogs a little bit to the east, and then heads up towards Yellowstone. And, you know, Yellowstone's plume has been consistently moving as well. Well, it's really the plates that are moving. You know, the plume is staying where it is, but it's going to keep, keep going on as the plate motion moves basically to, in a southwesterly direction. Something's got to give, guys. Something has to give. And it's so fascinating to see that this is where the Yellowstone plume originates and moves up this way, uh, the magma flow. So, you know, that really got me thinking, is this all part of something so much bigger? And, you know, is it possible that we'll actually see the types of, you know... Well, we'll see something like this. Is this possible in our lifetime? Do you guys really think we'll see that type of level of earth changes? It got me thinking also about the Native American uh, legends. And, you know, there's a lot of Native American legends that talk about an inland sea. And we do know uh, that the Cahuilla, 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 there we go. Um, now, they, they're a Native American people of the inland areas of Southern California. 
Original territory included an area about 2,400 square miles. The traditional Coahuila territory was near the geographical center of Southern California, bounded to the north by San Bernardino Mountains, to the south by Borrego Springs and the Chocolate Mountains, to the east by the Colorado Desert, and to the west by the San Jacinto Plain. And they had a lot of legends, and there are a lot of legends of an inland sea in California. And according to them, this whole area down here was just a massive inland sea. A massive inland sea that just slowly over time kept just losing a little bit of water, you know, lifetime by lifetime. And according to their chronology, this would have been there somewhere around 1600. It makes you really wonder, as I said before, with what we have seen in Death Valley, you know, do these changes really happen as slow as science tells us? Because they always talk in terms of millions of years. But, you know, if you follow Velikovsky and Hapgood, hmm, might not be millions of years. It might be rapid change, perhaps even in a generation or two. And there's many Native American legends of tsunamis. They remember the great quake of 1700 that hit Cascadia that was probably at least a 9.0 caused a massive tsunami and other tsunamis as well and in flood legends exact same thing we have seen in other parts of the globe and this is talking about the ancient lake Cahuila and you know there's always some sort of truth when we go back into the myths and the legends there's got to be a kernel of truth that these things are anchored in so when we look you know at just even uh the the geography and the topographical map and we look at you know the elevation it doesn't seem illogical that other times in the past when sea level rise was you know perhaps 400 feet uh higher than it is now For sure. You know, this whole great valley in California could have been one massive inland sea. Just perhaps the timelines are not exactly what we've been told by modern science. So with everything going on right now, we are living in interesting times. You know, hang on to your hats. You know, have your boat ready no matter where you are. (laughs) Because we we are definitely in uh, times like the times of Noah in so many ways. As always, my friends, thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. God bless and namaste.